trying to make that snap. I'm trying to make that snap. I'm trying to make that snap. I'm making the snap. watching some videos that make me think I know something you know make me think I know something a little bit more about this than I did yesterday and so I'm bringing out some discs just hucking trying to make that snap I'm trying to make that snap I'm trying to make that snap I'm focusing on my core today I'm focusing on my core I watched two videos today Ben's big drive and a Scott Stokely Ben's big drive was about core rotation, it's about the core. <sighs> Keeping yourself upright. Notice how straight I'm sitting. It doesn't happen all the time, I'm making a point. So if our body isn't held upright by our core, what happens is that we change the angle of our rotation and we introduce vertical rotation, which is bad. Not only is that vertical rotation wasting the power of your core because it's not rotating in the same direction of our throw, but it also means that your rotation is going to take longer to travel the same horizontal distance because it's not just traveling horizontally, it's also traveling vertically as well. So I tried to do it to where I could like just trace my finger and do like a graphic to show you what I mean. But if it doesn't work, I'll just have to try something else. We'll see. You know what? We'll see. You get the point. This is faster to hear than this. Makes sense, right? Now this might not sound like a big difference, but if you use your core to keep your upper body stacked vertically over the center of your body, all the way down through your hips, through the middle of your legs, and say you cut that distance that your body needs to rotate in half by eliminating all of that vertical motion, that means that you get from coil to extension twice as fast, and the disc will be coming out twice as fast as well. Matt. If your upper body isn't aligned vertically when you go to pull the disc through, that tension that you feel in your core isn't adding power to your throw at all. What it is really doing is keeping your body from hurting yourself. Now the backhand throw is a very explosive and powerful motion. If your spine isn't aligned vertically when you go to coil, then what you're doing is you're twisting your body in a very unnatural position that it doesn't like to be in. So then when it comes time to explode through your rotation, what your brain is saying is, throw as hard as I can. And what your body is saying is, please, please don't break my back. So this is why so many people feel like they're engaging their core and powering their shot, when in reality, their core is only tight because their body is subconsciously defending itself from injuries. So to allow our core to be a muscle that adds tons of speed and power instead of a muscle that absorbs our power, we have to put our body into a natural position that can make an explosive horizontal rotation safely. And the best position for that is standing up just naturally straight and aligning your upper body in one straight line over the center of your body all the way down through your legs. It's working, it's working, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, this is the first time. And then I watched a Scott Stokely video about not shooting those up, keeping it flat. Either you are swooping the disc or you're dipping with your body or you are starting the disc at an angle like this on the backswing, meaning when you pull the disc to flat, it's gonna continue up. Or you're simply pulling the disc with the nose up or you're pulling the disc straight and then flipping the nose up at the end. All five of those are actually the exact same thing. From your elbow to your wrist, you are swiveling. Your elbow and wrist are hinges. The hinges move parallel to the ground. That's all this is. Your elbow is here. Here's a hinge. Arm, forearm. This hinge of the elbow moves this direction. Your wrist is a hinge. 
your forearm and your hand parallel to the ground. This hinge moves this direction. If you start the disc flat, if the disc remains flat and goes parallel to the ground, just like both of these hinges are parallel to the ground, the nose of the disc cannot go up. It is physically impossible to put the nose up. So you are not going to dip your body down and up. You are going to move parallel to the ground. You are going to pull the disc parallel to the ground. The disc is going to start flat and remain flat. And these hinges are going to bend this way and this way. And your follow through remains parallel to the ground. This is the most natural motion for your elbow when your upper arm is right here. When your forearm is here, here is the most natural motion for your wrist. Keeping the disc flat is actually making your elbow and wrist move in their most natural motion. Not only is that where you are strongest, it is also putting the least amount of stress on your joints and causing the least amount of injury. Anything other than a natural movement of your wrist or your elbow, you're asking yourself to get hurt. So the correct way to throw is actually the safest way to throw. It's really cool. Hell yeah, it's windy, but I'm throwing it with a snap, like a serious snap, and that feels amazing. That feels amazing. Now the wind is blowing, yes, but I threw it with a snap. So, what do we say? Is it real? Is it actually happening? I think it's happening. I think there's something that's clicking. I think this is the, the beginning of a new disc golf journey for me. Uh, man, I can't tell you how thrilled I am. Woo! I'm at a park, I'm just throwing. That's what you gotta do, you know? You gotta just go out and throw. And it's taken me a long time to realize that, but the more I do it, the more my game improves. So, I would just like to say have a nice weekend. Uh, I'm gonna try to have a nice weekend. I'm gonna have a nice 89th birthday celebration. It's to UK. Uh, some Father's Day celebration with my father and father-in-law. And, uh, and hopefully hugging some discs. 